Hey, I'm Ted Piera, and in this video, I'm just going to do kind of a follow-up to the last video. In that video, I talked about using a zine to uh, publish and promote your own photography. And I talked about low-tech low ways of creating a zine and high-tech ways of creating a zine, and, and I mentioned how I'd used the, uh, the book module in Lightroom to create my digital zine. And I did say in that video that I would do a follow-up and show you kind of like the step-by-step -step process that I used. Now, I, I kind of hesitated on making this video because I'm not a book module expert, all right? I bet probably a lot of you guys probably know more about the book module. There are probably some shortcuts. And even in creating my own zine, I came up with questions that I still need to find out for myself. Um, but I did say I'd make this video. So I want to give this to you guys. Hopefully it'll it'll get you started. It'll give you enough information that you can kind of see how I created mine, and you can get in there and start playing around and create your own zines. Um, it's a long video. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. It's a long video, but I did split it up into four sections. One is the first one is you know bringing in the photos that you want to use. The second section is your settings for your uh, book, your zine, and your layout, putting it together. The uh, third section is um, adding text, titles, things like that to your, to your uh, zine. And the fourth section is exporting, you know, put, get, uh, putting out the PDF file. Um, I'll put links down below in the description that will take you to those sections. And so if you come back to this later, you don't have to, you know, rewatch the whole thing or guess. Anyway, it is long. Sorry about that. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to um, bring in the 10 images, create a collection of those 10 images that I'm going to feature in the April issue of my zine. So I want to go ahead and go up here to fi File, Import, Photos, and Video. Now, there are other ways you can do this, um, but this is the way that I do it. I've already got a folder out here. It's in my... Um, Emulsion folder 2017. That's <laughs> assuming I'm going to do it for multiple years. But anyway, for 2017, and I've got a, my collection of 10 images for April, and I'm just going to drag those over here. So, yep, these are all selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit import, and that's going to bring in my 10 images. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, go over to the book module. Okay, so we're here in the library, uh, library module in Lightroom. I, I brought in the 10 images that I want to use in my um, April issue of my zine. So now it's time to create the layout and start putting your zine together, right? So I'm going to go over here from library module, go over to book module in the uh, upper right-hand corner menu. Click on that. And you'll see that uh, Lightroom kind of, man, it tries to help you, right? It just kind of puts together, kind of pre-populates pages and creates a zine for you. Um, I don't want that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click Clear Book because I want to I want to create a different kind of layout, have a little more control over it. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I'll, I'll clear that out. Then I'll go over here and I'll select what type of uh, publication I want to do. I can do a blurb book, and that's a place where you can actually send it to, and they will print the book for you. Um, I could do a PDF version, and you would think that that's what I want, right? But I'll explain in a second why I don't. Okay, so then if I go to another option, you could just have a series of JPEGs if you wanted to do it that way. Now, I don't use the PDF version because I did that before, and the image quality is noticeably lower. It's, um, they boy, it just doesn't look good at all. Um, if I use the PDF or the blurb version, the blurb version over here, if you look, it has an uh, option to export book to PDF. And when I do it that way, boy, the images, they look like they should. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose blurb as my type of book down here for size. It gives you these different uh, sizes you can select from. I just like a seven by seven, very small square, right? So change size and layout. Yeah. Okay, um, 
cover doesn't matter, right? Because I'm doing a PDF version. Ultimately, I'm going to export the book to PDF. So I don't need a front and back cover. If you're going to have it printed, yeah, you could lay out the front cover here and the back cover here. And then that would enclose your book and, you know, front cover, and back cover. So you'd want to use that option if you were going to actually print a hard copy um, blurb book. That would be very cool. But otherwise, what it does is um, when you export the book, uh, Lightroom actually creates two different files. It has one file for your book and then one file up here for the front and back cover. So again, I don't need that. I'm going to use the very first page of my uh, book as the cover because that'll work best for the PDF version. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and click on the first page. And now you can see it's highlighted. It gives it kind of a little color there. And down here, there's a little black box with a down arrow. Now here's where I can click out the uh, layout for this page. If I want one photo, two photos, three photos, you know, it gives you different options, right? So you could actually, you can be as creative as you want to. I want something just really, really clean. This is going to be the cover. So what I want is one horizontal shot that uh, is a full bleed edge to edge and then text above where I can put the title and then the issue information down here below it. So what I'll do is I'll look for a horizontal shot that's full bleed. Here it is here. That's full bleed. goes to edge to edge. And then uh, text up here where I can add my title and text down here where I can put the issue information. So I'll select that. And you can see it set that template up for me. I'm going to go ahead and use this shot here of this bottle on the step that I kind of liked. Um, and that'll be the cover the featured shot of the book. Now I've got to add another page. This is actually just the ad ending of the book and where Blurb puts its little credit down here. So I'm going to go ahead and from here I'm going to click add a page. And okay from there. Now on this page what I want to do, um, I'm going to keep it consistent with the uh, first three issues I've uh, created so far. And on this page I want just text. Kind of describing the, the uh, zine what the concept is, what people can expect from it, maybe where they can find it online if, if they, they just happen to find this floating around the web somewhere. So I want just all text right here. So I'll look for, I don't want photos, I don't want multiple, I'm gonna go for a text page layout. And I'm just gonna select this first one that's just wall-to-wall -wall text, right? And I'm gonna add all the text later, that'll be in the next segment. So this page is just for the intro text. Now here's where the first uh, photo is going to go, and I'm going to use the same photo that I used for the feature image on the cover. But I don't want, you know, this layout, I want back to one photo, and this is just going to be a horizontal layout, clean with some border around it, white, white space. And I'm just going to take that same image and drag it up here and let it go. So that's, that's the first image of the book. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, and click add page right okay so that's gonna put um, the same layout from the previous page you'll put down here and on this page I want to go ahead and use I'm gonna take this shot of uh, it's, it's Jim Carrey's <laughs> character from Dumb and Dumber Lloyd but this is kind of a cool shot so I'm gonna go ahead and it's actually taken closely around the same area just different time of day I'm gonna put that on this page um, and then I want to go over here. On the, this one, I'm going to add like a vertical shot. So I need to change the uh, layout again. One photo, but I want this layout. See, and I didn't choose this one. I didn't want it to have the full bleed from edge to edge because I want that white space around it inside the book. Um, give a little more feature to the image. I'm just going to drag this photo of this alley up there. That'll be the next page. Now then on the next um, thing, I'm going to go ahead and hit another add page. And this will give me another vertical shot. And I'm going to go ahead and select this alley. Nighttime version. It's not the same alley, but it's another, another very cool <laughs> abandoned alley. So that's my next page. Uh, for the next feature, I'm going to put a shot of the gold spike. A lot of casinos in this issue. Now, see, I didn't change the format yet, so it's just going to like go ahead and use whatever format was just um, there by default. So I'll go one photo. It's going to be another horizontal shot. And there. Now the book's starting to come together. Um, I'm going to go over here and click Add Page again. And this will put a page right after where I was. 
And for this, I think I'm going to put a couple shots of the uh, California Hotel that I got this month. Drag that up. And go over here. This next um, shot is going to be a vertical shot. So I will go choose the vertical clean shot layout. Drag that up there. Okay, it's coming together. Now I'm going to have to click Add Page again. Okay, now you can see down here um, where I'm selecting my images from, it puts a little number above the image if I've used them, and it tells you how many times they've been used in the book. For example, this, this image here has been used twice, um, once on the cover and once on the inside of the book. Uh, these have been used once, so this hasn't been used yet, and that hasn't been used yet, and that hasn't been used yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add, um, let's see, I think I'm going to start with, uh, I think I'm going to actually start with a horizontal shot here and take this shot of Binion's, put that in there. This next one I want to do a vertical shot and add this shot of uh, Four Queens. Okay, now you can see I've used these shots all once, that shot twice, these all once. I've got one shot left, so I'm going to need to add another page and here it's going to be a horizontal shot so I will just select that layout drag that up to the Bellagio fountains and now I do have one more page that I do want to add text to this is going to be another all uh, text page where I kind of add information just to where uh, you can find the uh, you can find copies of, of this issue and other issues online copyright information that kind of stuff so this can be text I'll just click on there use this to select text pages and again I just kind of want free reign there so that's all that now this is the layout of my book I'm not using the back cover or front cover um, this is the actual cover I'm going to use now I still need to add all my text right so I'm going to do that in the uh, the next segment so here we go. Okay. Now in this section, we're going to go ahead and add the text. And um, for that, again, I've, I've wanted to kind of create, you know, a consistent look to each of the issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually end up going back to older issues, grabbing the text out of there, and then pasting it in here. But I'll show you how I'm doing it and stuff, So because you'll, you'll want to obviously, you know, create your own text. So, but the first thing I'm going to really need to do here so that I can come back to this publication I'm putting together is go up here and, and right here you'll see a button that says Create Saved Book. So I'll click on that. And the name of the zine is Emulsion. So I'll just click type Emulsion and it'll be April 2017. Because you can see over here in this uh, side there was a April or January is February is March. Now here's April as so I'm creating. Okay, so that's saved now, and you can see that appeared over here, Emulsion, uh, April, and it'll say 2017, got uh, 10 photos. But now what I want to do is add text, and I want to use the same layout, the same format as I did in previous issues. So I'll just click on, um, like, February. Here you can see where I've added the title and uh, issue information, the inner page, the uh, concept of the zine, that kind of stuff. I've got added uh, titles for uh, each photo, uh, a little bit of information, very little information, uh, and then a back page where I put the, like I said, where you can find other copies of the zine, copyright information, things like that. So what I'm going to do, so I'm here I'm in Emulsion, the uh, February issue. I'm just going to click on that to bring it up, make it larger. Click in here, select it all, uh, do a uh, Command C on Mac, Control C in Windows. Now I can go back to the April issue, and I want to look at the uh, multi-page view, and click on here. Now if I click in here, I can just hit uh, Command V, and there it's it's already cop copied and pasted. You know the title, the font, everything. Um, let's see. But if you wanted to change that, you can just go over here to where is it type. And select the different kinds of font, uh, all the different things, the size, 
the type, the color, things like that. So you can control all that, whether you want it left justified, centered, all that kind of stuff it can be controlled in this um, panel over here. Okay, so there I've now got I've got my uh, first the first part of my text added. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to uh, February again and come down here, select all, copy, back to April again, and now if I go here paste again it's all formatted exactly the same way as the month before so I don't really have to redo that each month that makes that kind of cool I'll go back up here to view and go back to um, multi-page view so now the next page I want to add anything to is the um, just the inner text page here so what I'll do is I'll go down to February again and click in there I, could, I don't even need to you know, I don't need to see all of that. I'll just do a command C, copy, come back over here to April, put the cursor in there, paste. Now this has got all the same information, basically. It's I, I'm going to go ahead and change it later, but I'm going to kind of leave it as it is to just show you how I'm doing it right there. So if I looked, um, view, single page view. This shows you, hey everyone, here's my collection, 10 photos. And February, obviously, so I want to change that to April. And I'll go through and I'll put a little bit more, uh, you know, information that, that applies specifically to these shots and the kind of stuff I was doing in April. I don't need to do that right now. I will, I'll go back in later and do that. But I'll go back here to um, multi-page view again. Now the next um, big chunk of text that I want to add is on this back page. If I go to February, I can see that I've got this information here which is I just select all and copy, go back to April's and um, put my cursor in there and paste. All right, so again, it's got all the same information. If I click on that, view single page view. And um, if you'd like to see more of my work or learn more about me, you can visit my sites, uh, photography, tabphotography.com, or Journal of Artistic Process and where the zine is actually at, uh, minor11.com. Uh, it's got my copyright information down here just for kicks, and um, that's pretty much it. No, actually, it's not. Let me go back to multi-view. Now, I don't have any, um, I don't have any captions on the images. I don't put a lot um, because I don't, I don't really want to discuss, at, you know, at least for these issues right now, I'm not doing a lot of discussion on each image. But if you look back on February, um, if I look here, it's just something really simple like this. Where again, if you want to change this kind of type, um, everything goes over here in the, in the uh, type panel. And I'm just going to go ahead, I'm just going to go ahead because uh, <laughs> almost everything I'm shooting is Acros 100 push to 400 got the date and some kind of title that I put up just kind of define the image a little bit and so I'll just uh, select all that copy that go back to April and um, let me see let me go back to multi-page view and we'll, st we'll start with this one add photo text I'll just click in there and I'll just do paste and again everything is formatted it's exactly the same way as my previous months um, but what I'll need to do is I'll need to change the date for what um, what the date this photo was taken, and I'm not just I'm not going to do that um, for each image here. Regio. Uh, basically, it's just going to give the date when the photo was taken. I think it was earlier, but I'll go back and look at the, look that in, that information up. Put the title and. Um, I'm just for right now. I'm just putting what film I was uh, shooting, and and uh, if I was pushing it to 400, like Acros 100, push to 400, that kind of information. But so I can go ahead and just copy that since I actually have April in the date, and I can go to um, I can go to each photo then, add photo text, paste that in, and then I just I'm just arrowing, right arrowing. I don't want to add page text. I want to add photo text there. Okay. I don't need that. The page text. That's just a little place. All of that will go away. Um, okay. So and the next one, photo text. Okay. 
So obviously these wouldn't all have the same date, right? And wouldn't all have the same title. It might not even be the same film, you know, I'd have to, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the text in there as kind of a placeholder and then I can go back and um, make any specific changes. And again, I'm just, I'm just paging through with my right arrow key. Now I click on the photo to uh, bring up this little box, add photo text, click on that, paste it in. Or again, if you need to change text or add any custom text and you want to style it differently, you can do it all over here in the, uh, in the type panel. Okay, go over here, add photo text. And again, I'm going to change all this later. This is just putting a little placeholder in there. So all I got to do in, is go in and change the date and the title most likely because I think, yeah, all this film is Acros uh, 100 pushed to 400. That's why I'm just pasting the same thing for every shot. I'm going to change that later. But you guys don't have to sit through all that. Okay. Here's my last photo. Okay, cool. So now if I go back up here to um, multi-page view, you can see I've got my cover done. I've got the ins uh, inside text done. I've got the titles for each page set up. I'm going to go back and change each one of those later. But all of the general information, the kind of the template for all my fonts are there, all my text, that kind of stuff, I've got... Um, my ending page showing the information where you where you can find this stuff and the copyright information so that's basically how you can add text to uh, your images and to the rest of the book okay here we are in the um, final segment of this little tutorial here and um, I'll show you I did go through uh, since the last segment it took time and just updated all the, uh, you can see the, the text is all updated now to April. Uh, updated for this month's content. Change the dates and the titles. So it's all, all good to go now. My final page, contact information, uh, copyright information, and you do get this blurb page. That's the very last page in the book. To me, it doesn't bother me. But I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, investigate a little bit more and see how I can get higher quality images um, by using the uh, PDF version of the book. So anyway, this is your your final, you know, you're, you're ready to uh, export it now. One more thing, um, say you, you've got all this set up, but then you decided you, you kind of wanted to rearrange. Now, you, I don't want this picture uh, to come after it. I want to switch places. So what I would do is I would uh, select this image this page and then grab it uh, here and now you can drag it to anywhere in the book that you want it to occur and it will you can see that little yellow line will it will insert that page but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it where it was but that's an easy way where you can rearrange pages even if you already got everything set up and you realize nah, you know what I need to do a couple changes in the layout that's an easy way to be able to uh, reorder the pages but so now you've, you've got your book, you've got your zine, you've put the title, you've put the cover on, all your uh, photos, your text, things like that. Um, now I'm just going to go down here to export book to PDF and click on that. And it's just going to say uh, save as. I've already gotten the, the month that I want to save it in. But you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> this is where I get real lazy sometimes. I'm just going to go back to March and click on the... Uh, the uh, zine for March, and then I'll put the uh, title in there, Emulsion, but I'm going to change this to April. Now I'll go to the April folder and save that. And there's your progress bar. It's saving it. And okay, now I'm going to go down and take a look at it. Um, now you mentioned, uh, you'll notice that I, I did mention that it would print out in two different files. That's the cover. That's the front and back cover. And you can see there's nothing there. Now here's the inner pages and where we created the first page as, uh, as the cover. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now you see a lot of people are going to look at this and they can just, they can scroll through the pages. And that's why I didn't put a blank page. Like if I was going to do a, a two page print layout, I'd probably do like, have, I'd have the image on the right page and I'd have a blank white page on the left. For each image, that way, the images would um, each get their own tension. But since people, are, you know, a lot of times will scroll down through a PDF file like this, 
I wanted to go ahead and um, not leave any blank pages in there. It's another way I like to look at this. So I'll go to two pages and um, hit the full screen. And so there's there's the cover, the inner pages, your photos. And there you go. That's the tutorial on how I put my zine together. <laughs> Long video, right? I'm sorry. But I hope it gave you enough information to get started, to be able to jump into uh, the book module in Lightroom and um, just start playing around, do a lot of trial and error, try different page layouts, uh, different paper sizes, um, different fonts. Just see, you know, see what's going to work best for you. Hopefully this is enough information to get you started with that. Now, I did mention that um, I eventually want to take this to be a print process. I started as a digital zine because I'm one of those kind of, you know, sometimes you can overthink a project. You can over plan and spend months planning and those months go by and you haven't produced anything. I'm kind of the opposite. I like to jump right onto a project and then kind of refine it as I go. So I started with a digital uh, zine because it was easier for me. But I do want to have a print copy. I do want to produce a print version or just switch it completely over to print because, yeah, as cool as this is to share your photos, right? To be able to put them in that kind of setting and that kind of layout and share your photography the way you want it to be seen. Um, it looks cool digital, looks cool on the screen. And it is a step up. But just think if you held a hard copy in your hand, right? A print version of your zine so that you'd be looking at your printed photos rather than a digital photo. Much more impressive, much nicer, just a great feel to it. So I'm researching some things like that. I, I kind of want to be able to still print here at home, um, but I'm also looking into paper types and things like that. So as soon as I find out more information about that, I will share that information with you as well. Um, some of you guys are cool and you've already kind of jumped on this. I'm getting uh, zines from uh, like Anthony. He did his in InDesign. InDesign, great layout program. It's a little steeper learning curve than Lightroom, but probably because you're already used to Lightroom already. But if, you, if you're if you familiar with InDesign, check that out. It's a great layout program. Um, Kevin Welk did one in Lightroom. Awesome work. Uh, Paul Griffiths, he's got that uh, photography live and uncut uh, podcast or video channel here on YouTube. Um, he did his and he's, he's hosting it on issue. Dot com. I think it's I-S-S-U-U dot com, I think. Um, he, that's a cool option because it gives you the kind of that flip book look as you're going through the pages. But he said the downfall is that you do have to um, pay for downloads. So anyway, if you have your own site, you can put it up there. Charge for downloads if you want to. Offer it as a free publication if you want to. Um, but it's cool, man, and this is just the start of everything. I also think the low-tech ones are cool. Uh, stapling your photos to the paper, you know, doing your own artwork, doing illustrations, hand drawings and stuff. To me, that's even, it's almost a little cooler because it gives it that kind of underground effect, right? That kind of little edgier. But I can see, you know, if that's for street photography, that could be kind of cool. But I can see if you're trying to do more of a fine art publication, using something like Lightroom, uh, the book module or InDesign might be a better way to go. Anyway, Hey, I hope, uh, I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you get in there and get started with this and, and share them with me when you do. So I would love to see them. Hey, I'm Tim Vieira, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.